highest point on Earth, Mount Everest, stands 8,850 meters and has been summited by approximately 3,000 people, but at the same time, it has claimed over 230 lives. Weather at the top of the world is extremely hostile, making climbing Everest impossible for most of the year. However, for a short period every May, a weather window, often measured in hours rather than days, emerges, enabling climbers to make a push for the summit. The expedition to Mount Everest is extremely demanding, both physically and mentally. So in order to survive the mountain, let alone reach the summit, you need to be well prepared. I spend a total of 10 months training for Everest, averaging three to four hours a day and totaling over 1,000 hours of training. But I like to say that the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed on the mountain. The expedition takes two months and begins with a flight from Kathmandu to Lukla which is probably best known for being home to the world's most dangerous airport. From Lukla, it's a 65-kilometer trek to Everest Base Camp, or EBC. At EBC, the partial pressure of oxygen is just 50% compared to sea level, so you're basically out of breath for the majority of the next seven weeks. Good luck for the mountain. From EBC to the summit of Everest is about 3,500 vertical meters, which is climbed via four camps. The route goes through the Kumbu Icefall, a constantly moving glacier with hundreds of crevasses, regular avalanches and Serac Falls. From the Icefall we follow the western Kum to the base of the one kilometer Lotsi face. We begin to use supplementary oxygen here. That means carrying an oxygen bottle in your backpack and wearing a mask, which mixes the ambient air with the bottle there. To reach our final camp on the South Col, we traverse the Lotsi face via the Yellow Band and the Geneva Spur. The route is narrow and there's only one safety rope, so climbers looking to use the same weather window are all pushing up at the same time. It's unbelievable that you're at almost 8 km altitude, standing in a queue. Camp 4 is located just below the dead zone. At this altitude, moving is exceptionally slow, and you burn 12 to 15,000 calories a day. This equals running four marathons back to back, but yet you're not hungry as your digestion system shuts down and your body burns muscle instead of fat for energy. You don't live, but you're actually dying slowly. You set off for the 1,000 vertical meter summit push well before midnight, despite having only arrived from Camp 3 just hours before. The route is a steady incline with no place to stop and rest until you reach the balcony, a small platform where you can admire the surrounding peaks in the early dawn. However, temperatures are now so low that exposed skin freezes in minutes and the partial pressure of oxygen drops to only 30% compared to sea level, making breathing the ambient air extremely difficult. From the balcony, the route continues to the south summit. You're just 100 vertical meters away from the summit, but still hours away. Then, you get onto the most exposed section of the summit push. You're on a knife edge ridge, with a 3 kilometer Kangshung face to China on the right, and a 2,400 meter southwest face of Everest to Nepal on the left. The ridge is less than one meter wide in many places, and with often very strong winds, you're glad to be connected to a safety road. At the end of the traverse, you reach the Hillary Step. Once above the step, you turn a corner and enter the summit ridge, with the summit of Everest becoming visible for the first time on the day, just 200 meters from the summit. If you timed your ascent correctly, you should be arriving on the summit around the time of sunrise with a beautiful orange glow intensifying all around you. You're standing on top of the world. It's beautiful, cold and windy. The weather reports forecast at minus 20 Celsius with very low winds, but Everest reminds us of its unpredictability. It's minus 40 Celsius and 60 km an hour winds, and for the first time in my life, I'm seriously concerned about developing frostbite. You're tired and you want to rest, because you've been climbing for 8 to 12 hours, but you're only halfway. 80% of accidents happen on the descent. So after spending just 30 minutes, which feels like a fleeting moment, trying to catch your breath without success, and admiring the sunrise, you begin the long way down. 
we summited yesterday at about 4.50 or I did 4.50 local time here in Nepal it's a pretty unbelievable uh, feeling uh, and a very very tough day only once you reach EBC again three kilometers below two days later and you hear the Sherpa bang pots and pans together to mark the return of an Everest summiter can you take a deep breath of relief you've made it